Hey everybody, it's me, Rick Acosta, the Dodger Card Collector, coming to you with another video. Tonight is Friday, Friday night, August 23rd. And I have just come home from the Burbank Card Show in Anaheim, California. And I like doing these videos the moment I get home, just because I'm always exhausted. And I like to talk to you guys about the show and what happened in case you're thinking of going out there this weekend. And uh, so that's why I thought I'd come on and I could talk to you about some of my goals going into this show and what happened during the show, what didn't happen during the show. So, um, so yeah, so let's talk about the Burbank Card Show. Um, it started, they had the VIP event on Thursday night. I went today, Friday. Um, I got there early. Uh, let's talk about pricing, you guys. So if you want to do the VIP admission, that's $30. $30, and that gets you in an hour early. So uh, you, you can go to the show from 11 to 7. If you want to do general admission, that's $25. And that is... Uh, admission from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. Now on Sunday, it's a little different. Uh, the show is only from 10 to 4 and admission is $20. So that's not bad. One thing I will say about VIP admission, the the uh, I got there really early and I'll tell you my story here in a minute. The, the one thing I noticed with VIP is if you get there at 11 o'clock or if you walk in the doors at 11 o'clock, some of these guys, at least today, I can't tell you what's going to happen on Saturday and Sunday. Some of these sellers just aren't even set up yet. So be forewarned that uh, there, you might see some empty uh, table, dealer tables when you get there. I saw that today. Uh, the table that I was mainly hanging out today was uh, at George Diamond Yard Sports Cards and Levon LA Collection. I was hanging out by their table most of the day. And the table behind them... The seller actually didn't show up. Honestly, it felt like two or three o'clock. I mean, that table was empty the first few hours. So uh, I walked by several empty tables that if I probably went there tomorrow, they'd be filled. So just be warned about that in regards to VIP admission. Parking. Parking's where they really get you here, you guys. I'm not going to lie. Parking's $25. And uh, I paid, and it, it does. It left me very close. There was plenty of parking. <clears throat> um, since the Anaheim Convention Center, where, where the show is taking place, is right across the street from Disneyland, I can't tell you if there's any place cheaper to park in that area. Um, I have, I know, I have a friend who actually will park like a half mile away, uh, and walk, and if, if that's what you want to do. Uh, I would recommend parking below Orangewood, which is a big street in Anaheim or Garden Grove, one of those two. Uh, but parking's $25. Um, and because, and the, here, here, I'll tell you how I, what I did. Like I said, the show was at 11 o'clock. I got there at 10 o'clock. Um, I'm one of those, I, I show up to things early. And I must have been excited for this show because I didn't sleep well last night. And I woke up today and I needed to go to the bank and get cash and wanted to make sure that I ate breakfast. And uh, I've been having an issue with my knee, so I wanted to ice my knee before before I came out and just those type of things. And plus, um, I had the privilege of getting a, a pass to get in so I didn't have to pay, which was nice. And I wanted to make sure I got there in plenty of time to get my pass. So when I got to the Anaheim Convention Center, it was 10 o'clock. And uh, there were already a lot of cars parked there. I got a great parking spot up front. Um, so if you want to get there early, you can do that. And because I got there at 10 o'clock, general admission didn't start, or VIP didn't start till 11, there was like two people in line. And I just went in and said, uh, I, have a, I have a pass. And they gave it to me at 10.05, I was in there. So I was like going, wow, I'm early. And I've never been to a car show early. And I, and I know from watching some of these videos from the National of people who have passes and they get in there really early. It, it's still happening. The show's still going on. Not, not all the sellers are there. But at 10 o'clock, when I walked in, 
There were already tables set up. There were already ta- lots of people walking around. There's already people selling cards. So my first impression when I walked in the room, uh, and I'm going to take you backwards a year. Last year at the at the card show in Anaheim, it was uh, in t- two separate rooms on two separate floors. This year, it was one big room on one floor. So my first impression when I walked in was, oh, it looks smaller this year. And maybe it was because it was early. Maybe it was because the, the there wasn't many people. Uh, the room felt empty. I remember thinking, wow, this is a small show. This is going to be really easy to get to get around, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, at that point, I uh, walked in, immediately wanted to go say hello uh, to Luvon and George. George hadn't arrived yet, but I sat there talking to Luvon. And uh, before you knew it, uh, George was walking in with G's Mikey. And I ran into my friend, uh, uh, Sean, I ran to my friend Sean, and we started talking. Then I ran into my friend Mitch, who was selling. And before you knew it, I, you know, we just had this little group talking about cards and just things in general while the show was going on. So the room, uh, I originally said the room was small. In reality, once I started walking around that room. Uh, it was a big room. It, it was really a big room. Uh, it took. I walked the floor completely twice, and the first time I did it, it took me. I felt like it took me a couple of hours. I was walking slow. I've been having issues with it, with my knee, which is getting better. But I was really testing out my knee for the first time today. But uh, there was. It was a good room. And what what was I seeing for sale? Uh, a lot of obviously a lot of cards. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, modern, a lot of Pokemon, and some vintage. Um, you know me, you guys. I always say there there should be more vintage, and I would say that about this show. There was good vintage there, though, so I can't complain. The Burbank show is not the national. The Burbank show is not a, sh- a card show from out east or the Midwest. You don't see dealers with binders and binders of commons for set builders um i that's something i'd love to see out here but i the more i buy vintage the more i work on sets the more i think that a lot of vintage cards never made it to the west coast in their day because even when i buy cards on ebay it seems like all the sellers are from the east coast or the midwest but there was decent amounts of vintage i'm not going to talk about modern just because i don't know anything about it um, I, I, I'll look at it, but I can't tell you anything. So vintage wise, I saw a lot of graded cards, a lot of graded cards. Uh, I felt for my set building friends that there weren't as many commons as I'd seen in the past. They were still there, but like even Burbank, Burbank card store usually brings out all their comments from the store. This time they chose not to. Um, I found a couple of sellers who, Last time uh, were selling commons. This time they weren't. Um, but there were guys, you know, Dominic and Tyler and Mitch, George, uh, several others, Levon. They there was a lot of in, there was a lot of vintage going on. So, uh, and there were deals to be made in regards to vintage commons. There's these guys. I never get their names. They they put all they put a card they put their cards in in card sleeves and throw them in a container and you just have to rumble through them uh, and and you might find some good cards in there so there there was vintage besides baseball cards and I'm really bad at this you guys I really don't pay that much attention but I didn't see I did see some memorabilia for sale obviously there's always autographs you don't see I don't see magazines. You know, I saw some Dodger yearbooks, uh, those type of things. Um, but you, I don't see much else there. But like I say, most of us are there for for cards. So that's always cool. Um, of the of the big time companies, I noticed PSA there. I noticed Beckett, uh, Tag. Uh, they were there. Uh Tag was offering, and I, I saw Mike Moynihan did this at the National, and I wanted to do it for my cats. Uh, I wanted to get, a, Tag was offering 
uh, to make custom cards. And Mike Moynihan got his dog and I wanted to get my cats. And I, unfortunately, I just ran out of time. I never got to it. And, and by the time I was leaving, I had run out of money. So maybe at the next show or if I, if I go back uh, to the show on Sunday, uh, maybe I'll get it done. But uh, Tag was there making custom baseball cards. Tomorrow, Saturday, if you go tomorrow, uh, four-time batting champion Bill Madlock and Jose Canseco and his twin brother Ozzy Canseco will be signing autographs. This really isn't, this isn't like the National where they have tons of uh, baseball and football and basketball and hockey stars there. It, that's not like this. Um, this is really just meant to be a card show. They're starting to throw in a couple of guys in there on Saturday just to sign autographs. So they will be there. Um, I did see some supplies, but if you're like looking for binders, no way. It's not going to happen there. I What I see supply-wise usually tends to be top loaders and penny sleeves and maybe somebody trying to uh, sell their, their brand of card sheets. But I saw very few of that. It seemed like if somebody wanted supplies, it was always a top loader. So that's what was going on uh, top loader wise. As I mentioned to you, uh, I met a lot of people. Got to see my old friends who are always selling cards there, who I already mentioned. I met some viewers of my a channel, which I'm still stunned at that anybody watches me. But uh, thank you for those of you that came up to me and introduced yourselves. You, you really don't know what that means to me. Just because, like I said, I'm always like, God, you watch my channel? Thank you. I met a great guy. His name's Edison. And he, uh, if Edison, if you're watching this, you need to make a video of the card you bought from George Diamond Yard Sports Cards and show it to us. And you need to show us the, the cards. When I walked out, you showed me some trades you had made. And I'm not going to reveal anything unless Ed, until Edison decides to make a video. But uh, he made some great trades. It was great getting to meet him and talk about collecting. I need to talk to him some more just because uh, he's really into trading. And I need to get better at that. So uh, definitely it was great to meet all of you guys out there. Uh, some other things that you should know about. the It's hot out here in L.A. right now. What else is new? AC worked beautifully. That's good. Um, bathroom situation is very good, unlike from what I just heard about the National. Uh, plenty of restrooms. You don't fight. You don't have to fight to get into a bathroom, anything like that. Lunch. All right. Lunch is where I was kind of like going, damn, it's expensive. Um, they have food trucks outside which is not far. You just go down the escalator, walk right outside. Um, I ended up paying like $16 for two slices of pizza and a Coke. Um, but uh, there is food there. There are several food trucks. And I didn't look. I mean, I looked, but I didn't really investigate. Also, at the show, they were selling food in, in, inside. Uh, I don't know if they were selling salads or what, but it looked like the convention center had their own food in there as well. So if you want to eat, you can do that. Just be warned. It is a little bit expensive. Uh, I brought a banana, which tied me over. I would say, though, know, if I were going to go again tomorrow and spend all day, I would probably bring a sandwich. I would just probably bring my lunch. Uh, there are plenty of tables to eat at. I will say that. Plenty of places for you to sit. So there's no issues there. And that also brings to, to point about the room itself and the convention center itself. There is plenty of room there. When it comes to the aisles, you could ease, you're not saying, excuse me, beg your pardon, excuse me. You could walk freely up and down every aisle. I was even, and I, I say this about every show they have, the Burbank show, is that I saw I could have conversations in the middle of the aisle and people could still walk by us on each side and you're not saying, excuse me, beg your pardon or bumping into somebody. So there is plenty of aisle space. There is plenty of space if you want to just sit and and just look at your cards, text your friends on the phone. You just need to sit down and rest your feet. There are plenty of places for you just to sit on the edges where you can just sit against the wall. You're going to be sitting on the floor if you're if you're in the main room. You're going to be sitting on the floor, but the, uh, the room's carpeted with a nice thick carpet, so your feet aren't going to hurt that much. Um, but you can just sit there and... Uh, Relax a little. If you go outside of the conference room, there's plenty of places for people to sit, whether it's on the main floor or whether you go downstairs. So it's a good facility if you 
plan on spending the day there. I went there uh, with the intent of spending all day there, and I did. Got there at 10 o'clock, left at 7 o'clock, and the, sto- the, sh- the show closes at 7. I walked, out with a- I walked out with Edison. I spoke to him for a few minutes, and then when I left, everybody was getting in elevators, going, down- going up the stairs. A lot of cars were leaving at the same time, and you know what, guys? I just zipped right out. Uh, a lot of cars all leaving at the same time, but uh, the, the convention center had, was pretty organized and there was no traffic getting out. Granted, I did not stick around and make a left and go into Disneyland, or I did not stay for trade night, and the Disneyland fireworks were going to happen in a couple of hours, but I chose not to stick around for that. But it was a good time at the show. Uh, I'm exhausted. Uh, the show, like I said, again, is going to be Saturday and Sunday. And that is my lowdown on the show. I am going to show you some video that I took. My video always stinks just because I don't do much, but I will share some video with you. And I am going to share with you a card or two or three that I was able to get at the show. Um, I would call it a successful show. I didn't buy much, but uh, I came home very happy with what I was able to pick up. So, turning the camera around, I have been on the air for over 16 minutes. Let's show some baseball cards, all right? Stick around. All right, one thing I failed to mention to you the first when I spoke to you a moment ago was I did not talk to you about pricing. Now, I'll go ahead and be honest with you guys as I'm sitting here sharing this 1957 top Sandy Koufax card, which is a double up that I have that I brought to potentially making a trade for a card. Uh, I found that the prices were pretty expensive. Um, Some of the cards that I was looking for in particular, uh, one of them being the 1968 Topps Nolan Ryan, I found to be uh, the people, dealers were asking way too much for it. So I would say that if you do see a card that you like, negotiate because i do notice every the, the cards i bought today uh were, were, were negotiated and i was pleased with that um so just know that the prices are going to be high and that's just the way it is but if you see something you really want try to negotiate and uh i went in with to this show uh if you've been watching my other videos with a couple of goals i wanted to buy a 1968 top stolen ryan or potentially a 1950 Bowman Ted Williams. Uh, struck out on both. I did find them. Uh, like I mentioned, the Ryan I felt was too expensive. The Williams I did find, I kind of wanted higher than a one and a half. Uh, someone had a three and a half, and I did feel they were asking a little too much. And at the end of the day, I knew I was probably going to come home empty handed because I did come to the show with a mentality of there's a good chance I'm not going to buy anything. Uh, luckily for me, I didn't come home empty handed, uh, due to the kindness of, of one person. And then I was finally able to pick up some other cards, uh, after. So let's start showing my cards. Let's get rid of this, uh, Sandy Koufax card. Now, if he, I don't know, as I'm recording this, I don't know if Jeez Mikey has released his video. And if he has, I will go ahead and put a link on my description and, um, If he releases the video tomorrow, I will add the link after he releases his video. Because I want you to watch the story on 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 Jeez Mikey's channel because it's (laughs) it's just crazy. But uh I'll and I'll let him tell you the story. But at the end of the day, Jeez Mikey bought a baseball card for me. And it's this 1959 top Stan Usual. And I love this card. One, because nobody's ever bought me a baseball card, unless it was my brother. And two, it was just nice to receive a card from a fellow collector. And I don't own this card. I don't. I don't own this damn usual card. And it's it's a great card. It's it's well loved. I think is the term. And I'm a big damn usual fan. And Jeez Mikey was kind enough to get that for me. And why did Jeez Mikey give it to me? Because he did not want me to come home from the show empty-handed. So for that, Mikey, I thank you. This means a lot to me. It's going to go into a penny sleeve, and it's going to go into a top loader, and it's going to join the rest of the 1959 cards in my collection. So that is my Stan Musial card. That 
for a while there, that looked like it was the only card I was going to come home with. But I got lucky, and eventually what happened was, I said, I was looking for the Ryan. I was looking for the Ted Williams. I wasn't really feeling it. I was just kind of like, oh, okay. And then I stumbled upon this one table, and they were selling a card that I had been looking for for a few years. I'd say a couple of years. You know that I'm... My name is Dodger Card Collector, and lately I have been building more sets than anything else just because I basically have literally almost finished my Dodger run. Um, I, with, I have all the Topps cards with the exception of the 1952 Topps high numbers. I don't see myself particularly ever buying those. Um, I have all the Bowman cards uh, with the exception of Jackie Robinson which I hope one day George will sell me his because I saw his 1949 Bowman today. And I have all the play balls and the Gowdies and the things like that. So there was uh, a one card though that, I, uh, that I've been staring at that I could never find. And it's a card from the, uh, the 19th century from 1888. And I found one today. So I'm gonna show it to you right now and it is the 1888 N162 Goodwin Champions Bob Carruthers. I like I said I've been looking a couple of years for this card and every time I see it which is very rare I've never seen it in a person till today when I've seen it online somebody always wants an arm and a leg for it and I saw it today for the first time and I, I was stunned because I was like, whoa, it's that card. And I saw the price and I was like, okay. Well, you know, I, I I took some pictures of it, talked to the seller, talked to the seller's father uh, who said he might be able to make you a deal. And I'm not one who buys cards impulsively. So I instead said, I'm going to walk around and I couldn't stop thinking about the card. So I went back to George and Levon's table and I took out my VCP app on my phone and started doing some research. And, you know, I saw the price and I felt he, I felt it was overpriced, but it was still a price that I liked because I'd seen it for twice as much on eBay in the past. Now, uh, with George's guidance, he, he gave me some pointers on what to do. And I sat there for a couple of hours thinking about it. And I was just resting my feet and my knee over it their table, George and LeBlanc's table. And I thought, I kept thinking to myself, I really want this card. It's a card I've always wanted. It's it's a card from the Brooklyn Bridegrooms, which are the original versions of today, present day Dodgers. And I go, this, my, I feel my Dodger cards are a history of the, of basically the Los Angeles Dodgers franchise dating back to Brooklyn. So Bob Carruthers pitched for the Brooklyn Bridegrooms, as they were known back then. This was the team that eventually Charles Ebbets worked for, the team eventually he bought and renamed them the Brooklyn Dodgers. Uh, after a couple of other names like the Superbas and the Robins. But these are basically the Dodgers of 1888. And Bob Carruthers, I looked up, he had a really distinguished career for a guy who's not in the Hall of Fame. He pitched from 1884 to 19 or 1884 to 1992. In those nine years that he pitched, he won 218 games. He was a 40 game winner twice. One, you guys, he won the, he won 40 games in 1889 with Brooklyn. He is the last Dodger to ever win 40 games in a season. Uh, he won 40 games twice. He won 30 games once. He won 29 games twice. He won 23 games once. This guy, he pitched for the St. Louis Browns of the American Association, was traded to the Dodgers when the Dodgers were, or the, the bridegrooms, when they were still a part of the American Association. Then the, this was before the American League came out. Then the American so Association joined up, a few teams joined up with the National League. And uh, Brooklyn's first season in the, in the National League was 1890. And that was when Bob Carruthers won 23 games. So this is my one and only 19th century card of a Brooklyn, I'll call him a Brooklyn Dodger, even though he's a really a bridegroom. 
And this is a card I've wanted for a very long time. And he is going on my display case. He is going to be the top card, the first card, because I put my cards in chronological order. So he's going at the very top, very first card. This is Bob Carruthers. And I wasn't planning on buying this. Like I said, I went in with a, wanting to get the Nolan Ryan card. When I saw this, all I kept thinking was, I want this card. I want this card. I want this card. I, this is the one I want. I can get the Nolan Ryan or the Ted Williams any other day on eBay or on uh, at a show. I'm never going to find this card. And like I said, it was the first time I ever saw it at a show. And I think the PSA pop is like 100 so there's not many of these floating around. So uh, very, very pleased, honestly, to have this card in my collection. So that's Bob Carruthers. So I did end up buying one card there, along with G's Mikey's card. That means I have two cards. As I'm walking out the door, I, uh, besides the Nolan Ryan card, I also needed a Hank Aaron card to finish the 1968 set. Uh, those were my last two cards. And I wasn't having any luck finding a Hank Aaron either. I'd either find it too cheap, or too cheap, which meant it was too beat up, or I'd find a half decent one and they wanted like $90 for it. And I go, You're kidding me. So I had no interest in even negotiating. But somewhere near the end of the show, um, I was walking back to the, to the guy's table and all of a sudden I saw the seller and he had this card here, which is the 1968 Topps Hank Aaron and a PSA 3, and my plan was to buy this card ungraded, but um, he had this card at $55, and I offered him 45 and he said, why don't we make it 50 and I said, I'll think about it. <laughs> I walked away, and I went back to George and Levon's table and sat there looking at VCP, looking at the latest eBay sales, and once I started thinking about it, I go, you know what? If I buy this on eBay for $45, which I'm not going to find it for $45, um, I'll have to pay tax. I'll have to pay shipping. I can get it right now for $50. So the show was literally ending at 7. And I don't, I've never been to a show when it ends. So I don't know if everybody just closes up and leaves. And as I said goodbye to George and Levon and thanking them, uh, for letting me hang with them all day, which was really fun because I get to listen to George and Levon uh, do their thing, which is incredible because they were having great days at their table. And in, I would like to learn more about selling cards. And it was just wonderful to hear, get, get their feedback, be able to speak with them and just listen to how they speak to potential customers on how to sell cards. So George Levon, if you guys are watching, thank you so much for letting me hang. So I left to those guys like at 6.45. Uh, but as I did that, I ran into my friend Mitch. And I hadn't gotten to speak to Mitch because every time I went to his table, he was a god. So we started talking about 1950 Bowman because he has an amazing 1950 Bowman collection that he's uh, selling a bunch of singles for. And I'm like, Mitch, I need to talk to you at some point in the next next couple of shows just because Mitch has some really nice cards but he has a lot of cards uh, numbered one through 72 which are a lot more expensive and uh, I have, eventually I need to start buying some cards from him so uh, so I ran into Mitch and I was getting nervous that the uh, the show was going to close and I said goodbye to Mitch and it was now it's like 6.58 we walked over to this other table that was selling the Hank Aaron card and luckily, he was still talking to somebody, and, he, and I go, can I see the Aaron again? And he said, yes. And I decided not to try to push for $45. So I just said, "Are you? St will you still sell this to me for $50? And he goes, yes. So I bought this 1950 uh, or 1969 Topps Hank Aaron. So that leaves me with one card left for the 1968 set. And that's Nolan Ryan, which I've already said a thousand times in this video. So those are my pickups today from the Burbank Card Show in Anaheim, California. It was a fun day. Thank you for everybody who uh, watched the video today. Thank you for everybody whose name I mentioned this video. Uh, it was a fun day, you guys. And uh, from a personal standpoint, I, get, I can't get too deep, but today's the anniversary of something sad for me. So today was a very nice day uh, to spend with all of you. All right, you guys, I will talk to you very soon because I have another set that's going to arrive in the next week, and I can't wait to show you guys uh, in my next video. All right, take care. We'll talk to you soon.
That's what? Billy Pierce. Yeah. 51. All blue back. These ones, All Star Weekend. Cheers. 